so one of the things that I've said that we have to watch out for, uh, especially this year, um, is councils going bankrupt. And I am very fearful that much of the North, <laughs> indeed, much of especially some of the red wall seats that the Tories recently won, you will see councils start to go bankrupt. And there will be have to be questions asked. Why did this happen? Well, again, this is really twofold. First of all, austerity. Uh, councils have been the ones forced to bear the brunt for austerity. Uh, even now, you can go on, you know, um, I don't know if other, lo other local places will have it. I'm sure they will. But we've got a, a local Facebook page called We Are Barnsley. And whenever, whenever you see um, the council have to do something, which, again, not that they want to do, it's just because they either don't have the money for it or, you know, they can't continue the programme any, any longer. And, they ha and it has to go. Again, you know, you can't blame, you know, councils for having to make tough decisions when they don't have the resources for doing it. And... You constantly see the, the barrages blaming the councils if it's the council's fault, but it's not. Um, you know, the two sources for money which council have were, first of all, the national government. Uh, that's the predominantly where they get most of their money from in the form of taxation. That has been dramatically decreased. We've seen council money that they get slashed by up to 70 to 80 percent, and you will not be surprised that this has been used along political lines as well. Indeed, Labour heartlands and Labour-controlled councils have been um, unfairly targeted by this practice. Again, this is something that we have to um, take to heart and try and fix uh, so that you know future, shall we say, Conservative governments can't do that. The other way is obviously through taxation themselves. They have uh, business rate ta taxation and they also have council tax. And the third one they have was, well, it's not there anymore, was funding from the European Union, which they could go for projects or they got the through the um, European Development Fund. And numerous places throughout the UK were subject to those fundings. And as we reported back in, what was it now? Was it 2017, 2018? It was one of those two. But we warned that there will be councils facing bankruptcy because they no longer have access to these funds. Indeed, these funds were what were keeping many councils afloat. And just as during the 2016 referendum and afterwards, the government promised that they would replace those funds. Obviously, as I said before, you know, this is a conservative run, run government. They aren't going to replace um, any type of funding whatsoever. So obviously, what happens now? Well, <laughs> as I said, sooner or later, you're going to see councils go bankrupt and then serious questions asked as to why this happened. So uh, before we jump into today's article, um, this uh, please do remember to hit that like and share button. Also down below, there is a link to my Patreon page and a one-off donation link. And as always, thank you very much to the people who do support me that way. So this comes from the London Economic. The title is... Brexit backing Sunderland says it is not receiving the same level of funding outside the EU. What a surprise, but we did warn you. So Sunderland City Council leader Graham Miller has accused the government of trying to sneak through a watered-down replacement for the European funding in a blistering attack. Of course, we said that was what they were going to do. They, don't know, they do not want to spend the money. So the North East received uh, £437 million out of the European Structural Investment Fund pre-Brexit between 2014 and 2020. But there are suspicions that the replacement UK Shared Prosperity Fund is un very unlikely, I say unlikely, I'd say definitely, not going to live up to those numbers. When you look at England, you look at the regions that are benefiting uh, from the uh, from the European fund versus the UK one. It will be, quite frank, it is not going to support those levels, Mr Miller said. If we are quiet about it, the government will just sneak through a smaller, weaker, less, less supportive package of finance, of finance because this is what it intends to do. We must continue to press for a full share 
as we had, with no damage to the region caused by us leaving the EU and losing those funds. The government has to be held to account. I do not think the government has any intention to give us pound for pound what we had. And again, we've said this before, they do not intend to do that at all. Uh, because they've got, you know, they've got friends who need that money. You know, why give it to Sunderland or any local council when it can be given to, you know, your friendly pub landlord who knows nothing about PPE, you know? Um, like I say, this is this is where we are. Um, this is where we are. This is what we've left been left with. And like I say, pretty much going to go unchecked massively unless, again, we talk about it and speak out about it because with the Tories that are the way they are now with pretty much absolute well, unchecked authority with an 80 seat majority um, they can do whatever the hell they want so so Claire Mirror uh, was speaking at a meeting of the northern e of the, of the North East Combined Authority the Economic Development of the Digital Advisory Board, which has held a video link and broadcast via YouTube. She said, the structural funding before Brexit was worth around 2.1 billion every year. But the new UK government allocations would ignore deprivation factors, which will see the North East lose out. This couldn't have come at a worse time for us in the North East, said Claire Marshall. Uh, Durham City Council's cabinet member for the economic uh, regeneration who insisted priority for the EU funding replacement would be uh, would be local control over spending the northeast would be and would have been set to receive more funding had we remained in the EU and would have been able to continue to invest in skills jobs and projects across the region the government promised previously that the northeast would not get any less under the uh, under their new uh, replacement agreement but we are yet to see any real detail or commitment to the follow-through on that promise Sunderland voted to leave the EU by a significant margin in 2016 with 61 percent voting to leave and 39 percent voting to remain the delighted leave supporters drowned out the regional uh, counseling officer in Sunderland as she announcing their big win in the city they hugged and cheered Sue Stanhope and made the announcement at the tennis centre in Silksworth where they could count had been conducted with uh, unusual efficiency. So, again, um, you know, I'm, I'm lost for words, but you know that we said this would happen. I'd said it before. I'd even, I'd even said it to Nigel Farage of all people. Um, like I say, somewhere lost in the midst of a of an LBC recording. All I remember was I was the last guy on his show. That's all I remember. And I asked Nigel this exact question. Um, you know, you know, my town got a load of funding from the EU. Where do we get that now? He had no answer. He said that you know that money. Oh, that money's uh, our money anyway. You know, we should, you know, but. Where's that money now? If it was our money, as Nigel had claimed, and it wasn't, um, where is it? Where's this replacement for it? Again, this is yet another lie and yet another massive blow to the North. Um, you know, it's going to be absolutely awful and really tough times ahead for a lot of people. And we're going to lose out on so many projects, so much infrastructure, so much um, investment in jobs, skills, you name it, that we so desperately need. If we are to come out of this recession that we are in, and let's not call it anything else, we are in a recession, um, we need investment like we have never seen before. And we would have got approximately, as was said there, worth about what 2.1 billion if we were still in the EU. And now we don't have that funding anymore. And the government are not going to replace it. Which they said they would do. Which is yet again another lie by the Brexiteers. And yet another grand con. And, you know, how are people going to react to that? I don't think they will react very well at all when a lot of these councils who relied 
on that structural investment fund from the European Union when they start to go bankrupt. And the Tories are not going to like the answers when we start to see those reports into why these councils went bankrupt in the first place. So, um, as always, uh, thank you for watching. Please do remember to hit that like and share button. And of course, down below, there's a link to my Patreon page and a one-off donation link. And as always, thank you very much to the people who do support me that way. And we'll see you all very soon. Um, yeah. <laughs>